Hello and welcome to another Mickey Murdo video. And in this video, I am going to do a bit of a rant about the Battle of Jutland, or however you want to say it, Jutland, Jutland. Anyway, it's a part of Denmark, but um, the battle has nothing to do with Denmark, only a little bit to do with Denmark, because it is the only battle in the history of the world where the full might of the British Grand Fleet faced off against the full might of the Imperial German High Seas Fleet. This was the cataclysmic face-off of the century in naval warfare. And there is the idea, or there is the argument that people sometimes make that the Germans, the nasty old Germans, they won this battle. Which of course is absolutely false. Which is what I'm going to rant about today. See, in spring 1916, the German army had stalled in France and Belgium because the BEF and the French were sticking it to them. Um, the submarine effort had kind of faltered a bit as well because the British realised if you had all of your uh, tankers in a convoy then it would be easier to sink the German submarine. So the, um, the, uh, the, the submarine effort was failing, the U-boats were failing. So all eyes suddenly turned to the German Imperial High Seas Fleet under the new leadership of a guy called Shear, S-C-H-E-E-R. Doesn't that name fill you with fear? Shear, it almost sounds like fear, Shear. Anyway, this new guy in charge of the whole new German Imperial High Seas Fleet was for a bit more of an aggressive strategy against the British Grand Fleet. And so on May the 30th, he sent out his High Seas Fleet, all of the High Seas Fleet, which is a lot of ships, a lot of tons of steel into the North Sea and toward Britain. And Britain, because we have good spies, already knew about it. So they deployed their whole Grand Fleet on May the 30th, before the Germans had even left their ports. So before already, the British were ahead of the game. They knew what was happening. And so the British fleet, the Grand Fleet, was divided kind of into two sections. You had Admiral Jellicoe, who was, I love that word, the name, sorry, Jellicoe, J-E-L-L-I-C-O-E. I think I'm just spelling out everyone's names in this story now. But anyway, Admiral Jellicoe. He was in command of the British Grand Fleet, which is a lot of ships. More than the Germans, because the British always have more ships than the Germans. Always. That's just how it works. And they've also got better ships, because at this point in time of 1916, Britain had the best navy in the world. Um, so Admiral Jellicoe sent out his ships on May the 30th, and he had a friend called Admiral Betty, or Beatty, B-E-A-T-T-Y. I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyway, Admiral Beatty had a little battle cruiser escort thing of all, and had to go on a kind of um, scout in front of Admiral Jellicoe's main grand fleet. There was the Admiral Beatty, who was going for a scout to look where the Germans were. And the Germans kind of did the same thing, because you had Shia in command of the main high seas fleet, and then you had a small group of battle cruisers under a guy called Hipper. H-I-P-P-E-R. Hipper. Isn't that hip? Anyway, so Hipper was going out. And Shear's plan was he kind of... Well, he, I'm not sure he knew, but I think he kind of would have understood that the German fleet would have got been annihilated by the high... Uh, by the high seas fleet, the German fleet would have been annihilated by the grand fleet of the British. So his plan was to trap the small part of the British fleet under Admiral Beatty and annihilate that, and then run away before the Grand Fleet could actually come in. So what she did is he sent out Hipper with a, with a small bit of the High Seas Fleet to go and uh, to counter the small bit of the Grand Fleet under Be Admiral Beatty. And they found one another um, at about 2pm on May the, 30 May the 31st of 1916. And um, there was a few shots and a few shots and a few shots and a few ships were sunk and then Admiral um, Hipper, or I don't know if he was an Admiral, whatever German rank he was, decided that he was going to lure... Um, Admiral Hipper decided he was going to lure the part of the British fleet that was chasing him, which was under... Oh, too many names. Admiral Beatty towards the rest of the High Seas fleet, the German fleet, to absolutely annihilate it. But Admiral Beatty, he didn't think this was right. So Admiral Beatty then started to lure the German fleet towards the Grand Fleet, the whole British Imperial Grand Fleet of the United Kingdom of Scotland, England, 
Northern Ireland and Wales and all the colonies and dominions and Malaya and Fiji and Australia and New Zealand and Canada and Egypt and South Africa and Natal and Ghana and... Anyway, what happened after that was probably one of the, well, was the biggest naval battle of World War One, Because it got to the point where Admiral Shear was following after these Brits, and then the Brits were following after Admiral Hipper, and next thing you know, the whole British Grand Fleet was suddenly right next to the whole German High Seas Imperial Fleet. That's kind of insane. That's a lot of tons of steel firing more tons of steel at each other. Left, right and centre and upwards and downwards and every possible direction and in seven different dimensions. Until light fell and the Germans ran away. That's right. The Germans ran away. They were scared. She knew he would have been annihilated. Night fell, the Germans ran away, the British had a party, and then they went back to port. And from May the 31st onwards, 1916, the Imperial German fleet, High Seas Fleet, never left port again. They had had a smack with the wooden spoon, to say the least. And they ran back to their ports in the Baltic and that little bit in between the Netherlands and Denmark, they go into the North Sea and they ran back into those ports and they never came out again. The British had showed them who ruled the seas. Who ruled the seas? It was Britannia. And then of course you have to think, well, yes, from that point of view, the Germans had an absolute cataclysmic, destructive uh, defeat because they went home and the British had naval supremacy kind of from then onwards and then they did their blockade and starved the Germans from building more ships and food and all those lovely things. So what? actually gives the Germans a bit of validation uh, to winning the Battle of Jutland. And that is that they sunk more ships. The Germans sunk 14 British ships, the British sunk 11 German ships. Uh, and some of the um, British ships that were sunk were the Queen Mary, the Invincible, which is a bit ironic, and the Inflatable, or something like that. Anyway, those three ships were three that I can name of the British that were sunk. So 14 British ships were sunk, 11 German ships were sunk, and then using those statistics, those damn old statistics, some historians claim that the Germans won the Battle of Jutland, but that is just absolute nonsense. Because from that point onwards, the German High Seas Fleet was completely, not out of action, it could have gone into action, but it would have been destroyed even more. It just never saw action again, because they realised that Britannia rules the waves. 